Good evening, let the call stand to order. Uh, please rise to salute our flag. and by posting same on the bulletin board of the municipal building. June, can we have a roll call, please? Yes, we'll call from you. Here. Mr. Chairperson, do we have any new members or members that are going to be sworn in for the uh, 2014 term? Yes, Mr. Ryan, myself, uh, Mr. Dickinson, Mr. Gunn, and Mr. Over. Mr. Guy, Mr. Over, I ask that you just come forward and if we can swear you in. Okay, you're just going to repeat after me. If I talk too fast, you're going to slow me down. Okay, you're going to state your name. Uh, I state your name. I. I, I over. Okay. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear, swear that I will uphold the laws and constitution. I will uphold the laws and constitution of the United States of America and the state of New Jersey. And I will perform my duties as a member of the Runnymede Zoning and Planning Board. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to open up the initial nomination for chairperson for calendar year 2014. Uh, to serve as the uh, chairperson for the uh, Borough of Burnaby Planning and Zoning Board. Do I have any nominations? I nominate uh, Dan Hammer. I'll second that nomination. Okay. Do we have any other um, nominations? Move nominations. Okay. All right. Can we have a, a roll call? Thanks, Debbie. Can we have a roll call vote as to the uh, election and appointment of Candy Clayhammer as the chairperson for the Borough of Burnaby Planning and Zoning Board for calendar year 2014? Abstain. Dickinson. Abstain. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Madam Chair, I turn the gavel over to you and we'll continue with nominations for Vice Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Rowan. I'd like to open the nomination for Vice Chairman. I'd like to nominate uh, Mr. Dickinson. Second. Any other nominations for Vice Chairman? Move to close the nomination for Vice Chairman. Do you may have a roll call, please? Clay Hammer? Yes. Dickinson? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Fullerton? Yes. Walterly? Yes. Gunn? Yes. Davis? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Beatrice? Yes. Yes. Head over. Yes. I would like to now uh, appoint the secretary for the year 2014. I would like to put into nominations June Elkins. Second motion. Motion being seconded. Is there any other nominations for planning board secretary? Nomination being closed. Can you have a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Fushin. No roll call, please. Clay Hammer? Yes. Dickinson? Yes. Fushin? Yes. Fullerton? Yes. Offerly? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Davis? Yes. Yes. Beatrice? Yes. Overt? Yes. 
Congratulations, June, and thank you for a job well done, as always. Appreciate well, that. Okay. We now move to appoint our solicitor. Um, we have received a uh, proposal from Mr. Rowan. Mr. Rowan uh, looked over all of our meetings in the year of 2013. I think he did a wonderful job. Uh, his rates all remain the same. Um, and he does have another uh, gentleman with his firm that in the case that he cannot be here, that will appear in his absence, which is Mr. David Carlin here. So I would like to put in the name of uh, Mr. David Rowan as our solicitor. Second. A motion made and seconded. Is there any other names to be added in for solicitor? Mm -hmm. Okay, motion made and seconded. The nomination be closed. Roll call, please. Yes. Dickinson? Yes. 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 Yes.
June 11th, 2014, July 9th, 2014, August 13th, 2014, September 10th, 2014, October 8th, 2014, November 12th, 2014, and December 10th of 2014. And again, we will reward in 2015 on January 14th. Let that be a matter of record. I moved them out and let the uh, ordinance be uh, spread amongst the members. Okay. Anybody got that? Anything else you want to hear, Mr. Riley, before we go to the minutes? No, I think um, reorganization has been complete. We're good. Okay. Does anybody have any questions on the minutes of the December 11th, 2013 meeting? I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes of the 2011. So moved, Madam I'm Chair. sorry, December 11, 2013. So moved, Madam Chair. Second? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. we're going to hear this evening on our new business is uh, an application uh, at 601 East East Sham Road. An uh, applicant is Game on Gaming. You want to come forward and introduce yourself? Uh, this um, application Ryan, how you doing? is for interpretation of our um, uh, of whether or not the um, uh, the intended use by the applicant would be a permitted use within our, could be interpreted as being a permitted use within our zoning ordinance. Uh, it is not a designated permitted use. It's not a use that is unequivocally said that they can't be there, but they've asked for an interpretation to that effect. Now you have the right to after testimony to make a determination that it would be a permitted use, or you can make the determination that you want to treat it as a use variance and have them have them come back. Yeah. Do you want myself and the mayor to stay? At this point? Um, you're not really you, since you're they're not asking for a use variance. It's just an interpretation. I believe that you can with well, Brian's objection. I think you could participate. And we're allowed to stay. Um, you're allowed to stay. Okay, okay. because we're not voting on a use variance. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chairperson, members of the board. For your record, Brian Lazuk on behalf of the applicant. Game on Gaming LLC. Uh, with me this evening is the sole member and principal of Game on Gaming, Christine Beichman, as well as our traffic consultant, Deanna Drum, if you'd like to swear that in at this time. Yes, uh, folks, the, would you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give this board tonight is crucial and act to the best of your knowledge? Yes, I do. As a procedural matter, I have both the original affidavit of publication as well as the tax payment certification. And it certifies on that request that the board accept your statement. Briefly, again, the property is identified as 601 East Eastern Road. The cross intersection would be Hartford Road. Uh, it's otherwise known as Hartford Plaza, which consists of eight retail units with an existing commercial strip center, three of which are currently vacant. My client intends to occupy uh, approximately 5,000 square feet of the site formerly occupied by the right aid. Um, our proposal this evening essentially comprises three separate terms of relief that we're requesting of the board. First would be site plan waiver, which I believe we meet the criteria under section 331-54. Uh, again, there are no exterior improvements or construction proposed. This is an existing facility, including existing stormwater management facility. Next, we're requesting a change of commercial use approval. That would be under section 395-21C1 of your ordinance, as well as 395-21B4. Essentially, there's an existing ordinance. Whenever there is a change 
and commercial use from one use to a new use, we are required to secure approval from the board prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy or in our case, a uh, voting permit. And lastly, we are requesting an interpretation from the board that my client's proposed use, which is a retail commercial gaming facility, would in fact be recognized as a permitted commercial use under your ordinance. Um, I think everyone would agree that this is a very unique niche use, not recognized by most ordinances in the state of New Jersey. Um, for that reason, it's not uncommon where a particular commercial zone omits or does not recognize certain commercial uses that would otherwise be contemplated uh, within which those uses that are approved, which your engineer outlined in his review letter. Um, with respect to the existing facility, there are 117 existing parking spaces. Under your current zoning ordinance for parking requirements, there's a requirement of one space for every 400 square feet of building space. Um, the existing building is roughly 28,000 square feet. That would generate a parking requirement of approximately 70 spaces. The existing site has on-site 117 spaces. So we respectfully submit that parking would be sufficient and at the board of the professionals have the questions, Ms. Strom would be available to answer those questions. With respect to the actual use, uh, again, this is a very unique use I do have a pamphlet that was provided by my client, which I'd be happy to distribute to Mr. Roland, if you don't mind. <clears throat> Along with the existing site plan, we provided the architectural plans, um, what the interior renovations will comprise. Uh, there will be substantial interior renovations proposed uh, to accommodate the commercial gaming request. Uh, my client intends to offer numerous video gaming platforms that would include Xbox, PlayStation, and other gaming facilities, including arcade-style games, which are recognized in the plan for ball, basketball, and driving experience games. Yes. Tony, what question did you ask? Yeah. 
The question was, with respect to the games, will they be coin operated? And the answer was yes. And you said you're going to have is it three employees per shift, Yes. Yeah? Yes. What's the, uh, the maximum occupancy for that? I believe it would be approximately 150 based on the square footage that we have thus far. <coughs> yes. Um, as part of the foundation plan, it does provide for a schematic of the proposed layout. Uh, there will be restroom facilities. There is a separate room that is proposed as a tournament room, which could be, I guess, used for parties. But the intention is to have specialized tournaments for several of the games. Anything for the professionals? No, no, so he's, he's Brian indicated his application, he's asking for an interpretation. Um, it doesn't, uh, um, regarding waivers, it doesn't look like he's requesting to expand the building uh, <coughs> by uh, you know, more than 10% or plain to increase the low street parking by more than 10%. So if, if, you, if you determined that it was uh, a, um, Appropriate use that it would that it was or it was it would be an intended sort of use in that district. Uh, you know, a waiver would follow, could follow for any formal site plan submission. So I would leave that up to Brian. But, uh, I think Brian would concur. Right. Yeah. Right now, we haven't done any formal review of the site plan at all. Right. Uh, we really just need to know the interpretation of the board as far as the uh, property. Uh -huh. Well, is there any other questions from the board? Yeah, um, Mr. Lizzo, in your application, you made reference to waivers from chapter on, on the bar code at 395-21. You make reference to C and D. On 21C is our, uh, parenthesis 1. On 21D is parent, open parent, close parent 4. What right. part of the code is that making reference to? That D4 is a specific requirement in your ordinance that whenever you have a change of commercial use from a Rite Aid to any other use other than a drugstore, you're required to submit and secure approval from the board. The zoning officer does not have the ability to issue that approval directly. The requirement is to come before the board. Uh, the primary intent of that ordinance, as most ordinances, would be to address any site plan deficiencies or issues. Once again, we're requesting a site plan waiver because we have a fully uh, built out site. Uh, the only approval we're seeking from the board other than an interpretation is a waiver of any site plan requirements and to secure the CO approval or chain of use approval that's required in your ordinance. The uh, parking lot, you made reference to all the parking spaces? Yes, it is. at present, um, as far as the site, there is an existing 28,000 square foot brick and mortar building, and there is existing 117 uh, parking spaces. And they're also shared by the dollar store, shared by the tax Correct. office, what shared, are, shared by the nail salon. E each, of, each of the eight units, there are a total of eight units in the existing building. We will occupy one unit. Under your zoning ordinance, the parking requirement for the 28,000 square foot building would generate a parking requirement of 70 spaces. We exceed that by approximately 47 spaces. Now, within the meets and bounds of the lot that you propose the development, is the parking lot within the meets and bounds of the property you intend to renovate? Yes. Everything is pre-existing well, and fully built out. About 20 feet, maybe 30 feet from those meets and bounds is the center line between North Potasha and the Borough Run. And I don't see where anybody in North Potasha is notified or the township is notified. With all due respect, that's not true. It, in our affidavit of service, I secured a list of property owners from North Township and any property owner that was identified by the Gloucester Township tax assessor was notified. I don't have a copy of everybody. I have your affidavit of service. 
you know, how you, I guess your, your site plans that you render here, um, but we're not going to be able to get into the site plan until we decide whether we need a use variance. And, um, you know, it is not a permitted use uh, under our ordinance. And we do like to see our professionals go in there, do a checklist, um, bring us up to speed on any deficiencies, any changes that they might deem necessary, um, as well as letting us see your site plan, let us see what your intentions are, because we want to get a fair and equitable plan together for the town and for the applicant. And if we don't do that, then we basically, once you walk out of here, we have really no idea, you know, what exactly is going, going to go there. And, you know, we, we try to take a very proactive um, stand on, on what we want to have in the town and, and you know, again, the hours of operation and, you know, all that good stuff. And uh, we would like to, I mean, myself, I'm only one person, but I do, I do like to see, you know, all the professionals go in and bring it, and bring us back a checklist and, and see everything that he, that he's been inside the building. He's seen everything. I know you're not making any major exterior site plan uh, changes. I understand that maybe some facade size and whatnot. Um, but, uh, you know, I think it's something that myself, I'd probably like to see uh, our professionals go in and take a look inside the building. And, uh, Excuse me, is, that, is that typical for us to inspect the inside of the building? No, yeah. that, that's the only building. That would be uh, the building inspector. Yeah, Mr. Mike. Yeah. Or, yes. or the building permit. Right. Um, me, me, it would just be the outside site. Right. Uh, in this case, that was going to be my question. That I understand the site plan, they're not changing the footprint of the property. So that's why I'm wondering what, what could be possibly changed. And, and I think it's important to understand right gate has only been uh, out of the property for approximately six months. This has not been a property that has been vacant for a number of years. That coupled with the fact there there are five other tenants that currently occupy this facility. Um, I appreciate the uh, chairperson's comments. However, the municipal land use law under 4055B7B specifically permits, recognizes, and authorizes powers of the board to interpret a particular zoning ordinance. Um, it is the rare ordinance which fully encompasses every contemplated use that would be permitted particularly in particular in a particular zoning district in this case the commercial zoning district it's our position respectfully that the retail gaming center falls within those number of uses that are currently recognized um, if the board were to grant such an interpretation i don't believe my client would have any objection to submitting a site plan application and a sealed plan where the board and particularly the professionals could more thoroughly examine the property and at a different time. We will time, be here tonight with a use variance waiver and come back with a site plan for our approval. Well, essentially, if the board were inclined to grant the interpretation that our gaming center is a permitted use within the commercial uh, district and we would submit a sealed plan and request a site plan review or waiver at a separate meeting. And again, I think that would provide your professionals, particularly your engineer, uh, with additional time to do an analysis of the facility. That that sounds uh, fine, fine to me. I just I just want us I want us to be involved in anything that's going on now. Understood. So I want us to be involved in it. I want us to have a hand in it, and uh, um, I couldn't be happier that you guys are going in. But I, I do want us to have a hand in it. So. Uh, so, any other questions? If the board were in five, we would amend our application to solely seek an interpretation of the use of deferring to a later date the site plan waiver and change of use approval. To a later date? Sure. We would submit an <coughs> application. Okay. But did you want a, de a determination now, tonight? Uh, yes. Brian? Okay. We're solely on the use. Otherwise, okay. this is an entirely different animal as far as a use variance application. Well, if we do that tonight, Mr. Rowan, we'll be able yeah, to... Yeah, the board, I mean, I agree with Brian, and, and I, I represent other, other towns, and you, you, 
no ordinance can do an exhaustive itemization of what would be permitted. So then it becomes <coughs> behooving upon the board to make a determination. Yes, if we were to review this or if this was to be looked at again, would these type of facilities be a permitted use? Mm -hmm. I mean, you could have uh, uh, somebody could come in and I, I guess ask for uh, to have a cooking school there. Well, it's, there's, it's not that on this permitted use. I mean, cause you just can't cover everything. So we'll be able to waive the elected? Well, you LP. could make the interpretation and say, Way yes, we there. believe it would be a permitted use, or it would it, it would be granted a permitted use status, but we would like to have a, 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 maybe a, a review of site subject to site, site plan. Review. Yeah, yeah, subject to a site plan review, yeah. That's the best of those worlds, I think. Well, the question I had this morning is, I wanted to know if any of the residents would be typically, as the residents, their opinion of this one, uh, even though it's an informal. Yeah. That's the question that I don't think myself and the mayor thought that we would be involved in this because yeah. we thought this would be a use issue. And I did read the ordinance ahead of time, and I agree, it doesn't uh, outline every single thing. You know, I'm. Uh, it doesn't specifically say it. I, I don't know. That's. Uh, I'm, I'm teetering because I, I don't know uh, the top of the board things. It is silent. Um, it is a big retail shopping center. That's why I asked certain things. Uh, right. It's not in the middle of residential neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's in a big commercial. Well, I think, I think if we, I think if we're able to have a hand in the site plan of it, I think, I think that uh, we would be able to address any concerns we would have at oh, that at that juncture. They would be coming back for site plan approval, maybe next month or whatever. And uh, what is in a commercial district? Is that what you were saying? It's a commercial yes. district. Yes. It is. Yeah. We just want to be able to have a hand in exactly, you know, everything that's going to be, yeah. you know, going in there. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? Well, just a, one line gambling or anything that would be. Yeah. 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 They did say online games. I did hear them say online games. Yeah. It's, 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 no, but it's different. The name is game game. Yeah. It's. Yeah. it's uh, Are you going to do waiver rentals? Yeah. Anything on that wouldn't be on there, Anthony, would go always be that subject to the interpretation of yes. whether it would. Be. Or a board could say, no, it's you know there there should be a use variance. That's that's in your that's what he's made an application saying to the board. Board, would you make a determination that is this would this have been a, if you could list everything in the world would this have been one of the ones something at a gaming or a recreational facility or or whatever would that have been a permitted use in your commercial time right would you so would you like to uh restate his uh revised request of us like so we can have a whole call vote well i think we want to open it up to the public because they were noticed and you know they get the, they get the public's input and then the the motion would be that you you could, i would suggest that somebody on the board put it on the record that you know her testimony and you believe that this is is an acceptable use in the, your commercial district home. and then you would you know get vote on that ter uh, determination all right this is point in time i'd like to open the meeting up to the public anyone wishing to speak on this matter and this matter only come on forward and be heard this matter only okay one no one no, 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 microphone please microphone please name and address please Sorry. Okay. You think it's a terrible idea. And I'll tell you why I think it's a terrible idea. Yeah, I think it's a terrible idea. Oh, I'm Marilyn Dracula. I live at 331 Sunnybrook Road. Yeah. I think it's a terrible idea. And I'm going to tell you what. Are you the one that's going to do this? Yes. Okay. Well, this is why it's a terrible idea. I you think. Have to talk in the mic, please. I think that this area, this, what is it, going to be Rite Aid? Is that where they're going to put it in? would be better served as some kind of a youth center. And this is to be, I don't think these video games are productive. I think all they represent is some kind of violence for young kids, all kinds of crazy attractions, whereas if you had a youth center, kids could learn music, they could learn art, they could do all kinds of different things. It could be more educational. I don't think this is going to be good. I think kids are going to be, kids are going to be there without their parents. They're going to be drinking. They're going to be drugging. They're going to be hanging out with their cigarettes in front. Nobody's going to be able to park. I, I have a handicapped sticker. There's, I go to 
in the jail. That's the only handicapped place that I can park. I don't know about my dollar store, I don't know. But I think it's a very poor idea. I don't think this will serve the community at all. Right. I think if you do it, you're going to be sorry. Right. And I have been I've taught from first grade into community college. Right. And I know what students are like, and I know what kids do. And there's no way you can tell me that 16-year-old, 15-year-old are going to be just, okay, I'll see you, Dad, Mom, I'm going to go there. It's not a good idea. It really does not serve, it's not productive at all. Yeah. You really need to think very seriously about this, and think about, once you say yes, then you have said yes, and that's it. And then people are gonna start saying, well, this is a terrible idea. And you have, you have image nail, you know, Kit over there, with his wife, who's pretty popular, you know where it is? Image nail. Yeah, it's in the same home. Yeah. You know where it is? Yeah, where yeah. it is? Yeah, and there's a dollar store, and then there's a hair place, on those wonderful places down there. How are those people gonna, how, the, how are they going to, they have their other customers. How are they going to withstand all this going on? Think about that. Yeah. What about Acme? Right. What about all those older people, like myself, going to Acme? Think about it. How are they going to like this with all this going on in the corner? I think you should do something, but I don't think that's what you should do. Right. You know, I'm, I'm really sorry. Okay, I just, I went down and I talked to, I did go down and talk to Please go. I did go down and talk to um, <coughs> Kevin Mondello. The two people there, and they said they were going to have some kind of a concession. And I asked them, "Well, what's really going on?" Because I was concerned because the man who does my nails told me about it. So I said, "I'm going down there." They said, "Oh no, it's going to be a family thing. You'll see all these family games. Everything's going to be great." Blah blah blah. And I said, "Oh yeah, right. They're going to have some kind of a concession there. You know, when they do these catering, and they're going to have this concession." I said, "All right," and I just said, "Ciao, and we'll see." But I'm, I'm telling you, this is not a good idea. Yeah. Seriously, once you do it, that's it. And then it's gonna be all of this, oh my God, what have I done? They gotta think serious about it. Not, I don't have anything against you at all. But I think, it's, I really don't. But I'm just saying that it's, if you wanna do something for the youth in front of me, you should think of something more educational. Think of the arts, and don't say, oh, art. And just, I'm not, uh, everything. You can do all sorts of things there, and kids might really thrive on it, and they might really love it. You just have to plan it out. And I am an artist, I'm a painter, and I've taught for many years, and I'd be more than happy to help you with some of that. And I'm sure there's a lot of people in the community who know other things about the art, who know things about music, and maybe dance, or something else, but wouldn't that be better for your kids? Well, unfortunately, we have an application in front of us. That, that is, the application is in front of us, so I, I can't really What's that mean? the applicant to, to speak on if, you know, I, we have an application in front of us that, that we are looking at at this point in time. And the application, what does that really mean? What does that mean? Well, everything that this applicant would like to do at Game World Gaming is really... I know, but don't you, don't you have, a, uh, whether you say yes or no, or no, you have no, you can just do it. We can, we can only tell them if we interpret it as a permitted use. It's, it's not like we can... Stop it. We have police departments to take care of you know, if there's loitering and things of that nature. I mean, there's, there's facilities in place that are not within our purview. You know, the public safety officers in this town were notified of this application and they were uh, asked to submit any problems or, uh, I would say, you know, uh, questions that they had with this application and or the uh, chief of police or the uh, fire department has uh, any concerns that they could not uh, substantiate, you know, some trolls and whatnot if this were to be granted. So, in other words, the owners would fall on the police department to control the or control, you know, if there's kids outside drinking. I mean, that's not something we can, we can't, we can't deny or approve an application based upon if someone might sit out front of a pizzeria and drink a beer. We, we, we can't, that's not within our purview of jurisdiction. All we can do is uh, adhere to the letter of the law and say, is this a permitted use? Are they within their legal uh, limitations to ask us to allow them to do this? Um, if they are permitted to do this and there's a problem with this, um, there are uh, factions in place that can address that. You know, they, they, you know, there are things that can be done after the fact. I and mean, if there's a problem, 
you know, when we do the we do the site plan, you know, that's that's one of the things, you know, when we do the site plan, we can ask them what hours of operation we would like them to operate. Um, for instance, we did another uh, last year the vault came in and we gave them a, a one year um, I want to say probationary period that we said okay you want to put a restaurant um, with a liquor license mm -hmm. that abuts a residential area and we saw uh, his prior restaurants they were beautiful um, they did a really nice job on them but we said listen Dean uh, we're going to put your feet to the fire a little bit and we're going to say, um, if you want to do outdoor dining, it has to be this. And he pulled that back because it was abutting residential areas, okay? Um, if you want to be open, we'd like to see you only be open this late, okay? He wanted to be open later, but he said to us, okay, I understand. Get, I'll give you a year. There's no problems. I would, I'd like to come back here and ask if I could open an hour later. So there are things that we can put in place um, as a board, when we review their site plan, and I, I appreciate all of your concerns, um, but by the same token, I certainly can't set somebody up to fail and, and say that I, I'm sure that this place is going to be a detriment to society without giving it a chance. We, you know, we have police officers and things that are just for that purpose, you know, to come in and say, you know, ma'am, you know, Mrs. Beekman, you have too many kids outside. This this can't happen. And then that's when the, the police have jurisdiction. We don't have jurisdiction over that. So I don't even think we're excusing any of your comments. But there's only so much that we can base our voting on. And what might happen, you know, we, we have to rely on the police and stuff of that nature for, for matters of, of, you know, ordering and stuff. We still have to determine if it's a permitted use. Oh, we yeah. still have to make the determination. And you're still going to determine whether they can actually go ahead and... Well, first we have to determine if it's permitted. Permitted. Right. And then if it's permitted, then you're going to say, okay. Then we would maybe we would put stipulations on, on... And how do you how do you determine if it's permitted what you do? We're going to listen to the audience right now. Oh, so it's, is, is it us that us. determines it? <laughs> Listen yeah, to. They consider your argument. Oh, they really do. Okay, I'm just, I'm just trying to answer, your, I'm trying to answer some of your your concerns. You know, I want you to know that the police have been notified of this application. Really trying to slip it in. They can, they they have the, the application. They know what this applicant is proposing, and as with every application, you know. Okay, I just the police and other things to do rather than sit around and monitor kids that are outside the arcade. Maybe there's other things that the police can do for the community. Anyway, thank you so much. residential in that area. 
we're right behind it, and we all know the proposal to put an additional townhouse is okay. So I think it's going to create traffic problems, noise level problems. I think, and I agree with the previous speaker, that, you know, drugs are going to probably enter into it. It's inevitable any time you have a crowd. And we're going to draw people not just from running me. Uh, you know, they're going to come from Magnolia, they're going to come from wherever around here, like Dora as well. And, you know, the business won't survive if they don't draw from a great area. So I just have a lot of concern about problems with the young people. Okay. Well, first of all, again, we're, we are bound by the, the, the law and this, as much as it does our butt residential, it is a zone commercial. And there's only so many places that uh, this whole list of uses is permitted. That's in the commercial district. That's the only place they could go. They can't, by choice, they, they can't go, you know, any place else but a commercial district. I appreciate that's, that's in the master plan. That's already been determined. Um, that's, that's an ordinance that, again, it's not within our purview up here to, to change. You know, we, we I have, understand that. You know, Possibly what you could do is have a contingency clause. If the approvals are extended and they proceed with this, if in six months there's been a lot of problems, then they got to close down. Well, we, we if can't not place... six months, one year. Mm -hmm. We can't we can't place those kind of calls on that. But again, you know, unfortunately, that that's not within our purview. That we, we have a police department and we have, you know, enforcement yeah. in place. Our police department in the evening consists of what? Two cars. I couldn't answer that question, sir. Well, I know it's very late in the evening. Our police department. Okay. And I, I've had occurrences where people call for police in run of me at night time and they wind up having to wait for somebody to come from one side or somebody to come from whatever that other area over there near Glen Oaks is. You know, it, it's ridiculous to say that you're going to patrol this. If you have one policeman one at night time in a car and one policeman in here, to take calls or something, then, you know, who's going to be? I, I, I just think it's detrimental to the neighborhood. Thank you. Mr. Cobb, thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. John McMurtry, 415 Sheffield Court. I'm within 75 feet of the right here. I'm right at the end of Sheffield Court. The old Rite Aid building is at the end. I'm concerned, like what Frank said, about noise. Now, is the building going to be soundproof? Did you ever walk by an arcade in the mall? Yes. Wow, right? I don't want to be sitting in my house with my kitchen window open, listening to rat tat 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 all day. I understand there's noise ordinances, there's loitering ordinances, and everything like that. There. But, it's not affecting men out of anybody, it's affecting me the most. So I ain't saying not in my backyard. But I heard a couple statements where well, it's not in a residential area. And there is stipulations for commercial properties that are made in a borough of Runnymede, stipulating that within 200 feet of a, res a residence. Yeah, I'm 75 feet from that building. I'm sorry, I didn't understand your list. I said there's. In some of the commercial district rules, there are stipulations for stuff that about isn't the, allowed the, in front of me. Right, yeah. yeah. That, that where if something's in a strictly commercial area, it's allowed. But if it's within 200 feet of a residence, it's not allowed. Um, um. 
I'm not familiar with that, sir. To be honest with you. Um, oh, it, that's the parking, running trucks. Yeah. There's all kinds of stuff within the one more street first. There's certain things, if it's just, like you said, it's not in a residential area. It's in my backyard. Oh, sir, well, I didn't mean. No, I, I, don't I live you know, on Sunnybrook Road. No, I don't understand. Right there, I mean, it is a commercial problem. I, I I'm glad to hear from the residents. You see, I, I have my opinion, but I, it has to be formulated by your uh, input, too. Oh, no. That's why you're here to talk, talk no, about right, it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and I, I appreciate what you're saying because you are starting to make me consider that there are some things that we, we may. We might have to reconsider things. No, that's Once right. again, we're up here right now making a determination if it's a permitted use to well, start off. That's what I'm saying. You know, and I don't know how the rest of the board is starting to feel. Uh, you know, th this board has the ability to, to, to make this come formally for a use basis. Right. If you right. give the residents a while to. Now, Bobo could make it tonight. With the end of Sheffield Court on 450. Yeah. That building is 25 feet from my fence. There's the driveway in the back. I know it very well. Okay, great. Right. Well, it's my brown house here. Yeah. It's the both the tan house with the cyclone, the uh, stockade fence. But I'm just one who said there's going to be three people, three employees in there. Now, I hope it's not the rooster guard in the hen house. You want adults. I don't want a 19 year old kid supervising the store. What's going to happen? Morning, everybody. No, yeah, and getting with food. We were told when that building went up, there's going to be no food. If the first one that went up, Mondello, and I heard her say there's going to be, I imagine they're going to sell pizza or sodas and hot dogs and whatever. Yeah. No, no food at all? Benjamin machines. Well, Benjamin. Trash? Benjamin machines. Okay, right. No, right. Interior trash, yes. Okay, right. What is it going to be? Food trash. Since that restaurant, when they, now I, I moved in February 1979, it was still a lot. Went to all the zoning boards, meetings, and everything like that there, the barrel meetings. No restaurant. We got a restaurant. I mean, raccoons, possums, squirrels, rats, 900 million animals run up and down Hartford Drive. Because that restaurant's got a little dumpster. I'm going to go to the fellow, the regular meeting and talk about that one. It's only about three foot high. It's got them plastic lids. When the wind blows, it opens. So I'm going to go to the regular one. I ain't got nothing to do with the zoning board. But if they're going to be doing food waste, it's going to be more. There was a rat trap back there. I ain't seen no rats. Raccoons, possums, and animals I ain't never seen. Right, yeah. Yeah. We got animals there. I'm just saying, the board, yeah. It's great. The kids will have some place to go. Now, I agree with you, cops. Here's the police department. They know me by name. Pulling up the trash trucks coming at 2 o'clock in the morning. Boom, boom, with the dumpsters, pick them up and drop them. Boom. Called the one time. The girl officer came. Well, what do you want them to do it? What I want them to do, vision ordinance in front of me, you could spit on a book night at 75A. No trash collection in front of me at the 10 o'clock at night. But it was allowed. Three different trash companies. Now, if they get a different guy to do their dumps, there's going to be four. We got two different sweeper companies. One does the acne lot, one does the strip store. They were coming two, three o'clock in the morning. It was called, oh, when do you want them to do it? They got to do it there's no park. 75A. Can't do it after 10 o'clock at night. 15 years I called up. Came to court one time. Every, because they would take it. Every time I said, I'm going to put a complaint in, cops came, let them go, gave a warning. Oh, it's their first time. How many times is it going to be the first time? Well, again, th what you're talking about now is very valid on its on its face, but that's again not in our purview. I would ask Mr. Knight, no, um, Mr. Knight in the back, are you familiar? Can you come forward for one second? Just because, John, I want to I want to address something that you 
Farms because it is, it is within Mr. Knight's purview, not without, within ours. Are you, are you familiar um, with the Cafe Mondello site? They don't have a CDC trash enclosure? I don't believe they do. Okay. They don't, sir. Right. So, I mean, most. In, in response to that, the, uh, the owner of the premises has been taken to court okay. previously on the uh, trash issue. And have, have some requests that he be um, mandated to put in a CDC enclosure? Of his um, dumpsters? That's what I can't do under the property. Well, the original plan for the strip store, every dumpster was supposed to be enclosed. It was on a plan. There were no plans. Well, all we can really do is, um, you know, Mr. Knight does that on a day to day -to basis. He does code enforcement for us. So he showed, he showed what you had to say tonight, but we're, we're trying to, we're really trying to keep our policy tonight on this application. One more minute. Yes, sir. Only because that dumpster being so low and having the light plastic lids when the lids are open, keep one of them regular dumpsters. Just the other ones. No, I understand. Not, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just, I'm just saying that that's just something that we, we really can't, uh, enforced this evening, but we're making Mr. Wright aware of it, and uh, that's that's what I'm um, just saying. The zoning part, when that thing was originally planned, was a planning board. They said, okay, we're going to put enclosures around the trash heaps. Why were they never put? I can't answer that, but maybe Mr. Wright get Mr. Mack and look at the plan. Yeah. Um, I called okay. about the trucks parking there running all night. They're parked in the fire zone. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. express trucks. John, what we're okay, going right. to do is we're going to ask Mr. Knight to follow up on that uh, with Mr. Mecca, and we'll, and we'll see if, again, we can get you an answer on that, okay? okay. Uh, thank you very much for your comments. Control the lawyer and everything like that. My main concern, I know that that'll happen, the noise. Like I said, I don't want to listen to machine guns all day. Work from 10 o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock at night, or from 3 p.m. to 10 o'clock. Okay. I told Gary B. at one time at the meeting, okay. when they were doing the acting lots of the leaf blowers, Two, three o'clock in the morning, against the wall, call the cops, not that. We'll try to work with the applicant on their site right. and see what we can do for you. I told Jack, I said, how would you like if I came outside the meeting and ran a lawnmower, a leaf boat, and said, John, you'll get in trouble. I said, why ain't the other people? Okay. Uh, All right, thank sir. you for listening. Take it into consideration, please. Sir. The noise. It'd be good for the kids, place it up. But the other stuff that goes along with it could drive me crazy. I got the number. On speed dial. Thanks, John. Appreciate Thank it. you. Appreciate everything. Anybody else? Thank you. Well, I'm sorry. That's okay. You go ahead. Yeah. Ed, Ed Costello. Ed Costello. I live at 569 Sherry Drive. And uh, I used to go to that lady. And uh, I'm a little concerned about the traffic area there because uh, I think we also have to bear in mind that uh, a lot of people enter and exit <coughs> that parking lot from Hartford Road to the city action or what used to be a lady. And uh, I know that there was also the Dollar Tree that's there. And a lot of people, as you're coming through, were leaving. Yeah. And as I noticed there's a lot of older people that go there and shop as well. And you've got to be really careful as to uh, and, and you've got to drive very slowly as you're coming through that parking, that narrow parking lot. Right. And uh, I would also like to add too that that was just a bearable, bearable size parking area when it was just the right age. I just can't imagine the, the gentleman over here who wants to start this business here. I got a problem with the, the, the parking facility that's there. It seems to me it's uh, kind of quite small. You know, and also, I would like to know what hours uh, this would be. Well, we did stipulate the hours, Roy, and I'll, re I'll repeat them for you, sir. Um, yeah. The hours of operation, and again, this is tentative, which also may change. What time? 3 to 10 Monday through Friday, and 10 to 10 on the 10 a.m.? 10 a.m. to 10 a.m. 
10 p.m. on the weekend. And I I'm just expressing my concern for the traffic, because the flow of traffic, as I said, people use that also as an entrance and exit means coming from the packing okay. going to Harper Road. I would cool. just would like to... Well, we'll get done with the public portion, uh, Ed. Um, we can certainly uh, have Mr. Lazut's uh, traffic study engineer who is here. Perhaps uh, we can bring them back up. To, uh, she did not testify yet. But if, if you would like, we could certainly ask her to come up and, and give some testimony as to how they plan to accomplish handling the traffic. And as to the parking spaces, uh, we are a professional uh, at Mr. Pettit and Associates. Uh, they did take a look at that. And could you reiterate to this gentleman, are we within the criteria of what we need to have for what they are trying to do yes. by, by ordinance? For, for this, uh for this zone and retail use, uh, the, the whole building, including the right aid plus the rest of the shops down the area, would require uh, 71 spaces. And there's over 100. I haven't had a chance to count, but there are over 100 spaces in that for that use. One second. Yeah. One second. Now, are we talking about the parking facility that's directly right across? From what use did they right aid on? Right. And the uh, 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 the Dollar Tree? Right, right in front of the right end, plus the <coughs> retail uses that are neighboring that that whole building. There's, one, there's two buildings on this right. area. There's the, the Acme, which is a totally separate lot. Right. And there is this. So we're not talking about it, the parking area, which is adjacent to the hair cuttery and all those other, and the restaurant there. Mm -hmm. That would also include that, too? If they're in the same building. Okay, so now we've got the work. Traffic coming in out there and parking, in addition to people coming and going, and old people coming in and out of the yard. Right, but what we're saying is. Well, it's a little like it's like that. You know, what we're saying is, we actually, in, in reality, sir, we actually have approximately, I would say, 25 to 30% more parking by our standard by ordinance than is required to do what we're trying to do. And again, okay. I don't I don't want to keep hammering this home, but yeah. you know, by law we we have to really if, if if they were not within our ordinances, if they didn't have enough parking for what they were proposing, then we can say to them and we can mandate that they do something else. The purview of this board is to say the ordinance is such that you need to do A. If they're doing A, then that's what they need to do. If they if they haven't proved the special needs or anything of that nature, I mean, it, it looks to me by law and by what our professionals have told us that they've done the, the review of, of the plan that they actually exceed what they're required to have. So we can't require them to have more than what is already required when it already exceeds what's required. I, I, I understand, and I was just kind of expressing the, uh, the safety factor. Sure, I, I, I you know, appreciate that. I, just, I don't want you to think we're not considering that, but... And, yeah. that, and also, I have to agree with that gentleman, too, that his defense line, people that, that the residents that live along Sheffield Court, and there's about 10 homes adjacent to the back portion of the house. And the fence line, their back fence is literally 25 feet from their store. So if, if there could be some sort of a proposal that uh, he's uh, the proprietor of this uh, gaming house, whatever you want to call it, could be soundproof in some way, that would be a comfort. We can speak to the applicant about that. as a traditional police officer. And I think that that would be a good idea. 
Um, the other thing I'd like to bring up, uh, I'm the mother of a 16-year-old and a 14-year-old, um, a sophomore at Triton, and every year uh, a paper comes home that says that the children cannot congregate on the corner where Fratelli's Pizzeria and Dunkin' Donuts are because of fighting, cursing, roughhousing, and alleged drug use. It's signed by the superintendent for PC, and it's signed by Mark Diana, the chief of police. Now, these are concerns. The building holds 150 people. Dunkin' Donuts only wants two people in there, two teenagers. Yes. So, those are my concerns. Okay. You know, I, I think that the staff needs to be over the age of 21, and, it, you know, it's a target demographic, and that's why we don't hire police officers that are 17 or 18 years old, right. because who's supervising? You need to have some sort of authority over these children. No, I have already exerted their guns work. I can okay. vouch for that because okay. I live right across the school. So we're going we're gonna to ask the applicant to come back up as soon as we close the public portion. Okay. And that, that now that they've heard some of your concerns, um, mm -hmm. we're going to allow them to hopefully uh, give some more testimony that will hopefully, uh, you know, address okay. the concerns. And we All appreciate right. you guys coming out. And I think I need to count the 117 parking spaces because we just got through Christmas season and I am a dollar store patron and I will tell you that that parking lot was dicey at times okay. getting into that dollar store. I, I have to question that 117 mm -hmm. parking spaces. Well, we, we can certainly give you a copy of the page if you'd like to see it. Okay. No, well, I'm, I'm, I'm the person here. I, I do have a spare copy of the plan. Um, I'm happy to have you okay. look at it. Maybe I missed a few, but no. I'm, I'm thinking. Open public okay. meeting. You're, you're okay. welcome to see whatever we have. Thanks for your time. All right, Rebecca, thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes, sir. Okay, then. <laughs> okay. Hi, we live at, your, your name please? It's Gina Simon. My husband, Mike. 572, Sheraton Lake, Ronnie right. we, we basically live around the corner from the dollar store in Yakimi and where the Rite Aid was. And um, we don't think that it's a good idea at all because what it's going to be is an arcade and a hangout for the young kids. There's going to be drugs, there's going to be drinking, whether they get it from home or wherever they're going to have it. There's going to be traffic like crazy around there because it's already crazy. When the dollar store has a lot of customers in there, and it's mostly older people, the traffic is horrendous. Getting in and out of there is a mess. You have to be careful because they drive through there like maniacs from the Acme to Hartford Drive. So having something like these people that they to put in there is, I think, the worst thing that they could put. Put something in there that would be detrimental to the whole neighborhood, but putting an arcade, which that's what it would be, would be the best, the worst thing that they could do because um, it's going to cause a lot, a lot of problems. And the police cannot handle anything that would go on over there. Like the gentleman said, there was not that many policemen on the street at night. And sometimes you call the police, and I mean, they don't come right away because they're just either not on the street or they, you know, they're doing something else. So it's not a case of where you call the cops and they're going to come. Because, you know, it's, it's just, it's not a good thing. <laughs> for the neighborhood, for any of the older people, the senior citizens that live in that area there, and there's a lot of them, I mean, they go, they go to the hairdresser, they go to the meal place, and, um, the dollar and I don't know about those parking spaces because when there's a lot of traffic going in and out of that dollar store, there's a lot of traffic, a lot of cars in that lot, and there's only maybe some on the side, and there's some in the back that are empty. But other than that, the parking spaces in the lot itself are usually pretty full, so I don't know where all those cars, you know, are supposed to be going. Or, um, I don't know what this board's going to do. What decisions they're going to make. I am 25 years on law enforcement in the city of Philadelphia. I know about arcades. I've been 16 years here in Camden County to probation. Okay, so I'm familiar with law enforcement. And I realize this becomes a problem for law enforcement. You expect law enforcement to take care of it. They can't be everywhere. This board knows that. We don't have the police to do it. That's a fact. 
Okay, uh, and I don't hold that against them. They do a good job. Mark and his people do a great job, as a matter of fact. But you have to realize, you put young people in there. I, I see these arcades pop up, and this is this is where the racketeering comes in, with these coin-operated machines. I mean, maybe you people on the board are not familiar with it, but I am, okay? I had to live and deal with this thing for 25 years. Now I come here to live in a nice community, run me, and you do a great job, and it's, it's great. You have the Acme, you know, we have stores in there. I, nothing against these people, it's not a personal thing. This is a business thing, where they, they want to open up a business, you're not going to own these kids. And like my wife said about that lane, low park in that no parking lane. Now what are you going to do? Call the police? Police are doing other things. I mean, the only thing they're going to do is say, look, please move your car. The kids are going to jump in and move it. As soon as the police leave, boom, the cars go back. And that, and if you would go there and look at whoever is going to go there and look, if you put a car in a no parking lane, which a lot of the times people who go into the dollar store, the wife goes in there, the husband sits in the car, because they're seniors. And you wait, and you you, know, you bring them beer because they're neighbors. You just bring them beer, and you go around them. These kids are not going to do that. These young people, you do what you want, and you'll have to live with it after you do. But that's what's going to happen. You're going to have nothing but problems around. And as far as the trash on the inside, it will come outside because they'll buy stuff out of the vending machines and then they'll throw it outside. Hey, I don't have to clean it up. Okay, it's not my business to clean that yard, but that's what will happen. I mean, I don't take the nonsense from them. These other people are afraid. They're going to live by there. They don't have the background I have. They don't have the white back. But this is, I mean, <laughs> and this is what it's about. But I'm here to complain about it, and hopefully the board will take it under consideration. It'll take my background into consideration. Well, maybe this guy knows what he's talking about. But I made 116 drug arrests in one year one time. I was working twice. So I know what the heck goes on. And these gaming, coin operated things, you want to bring it into the neighborhood? Do it. Live with it here. We're the ones right in the neighborhood, the area there, they're going to have to live with it because we live right around the corner, literally, from the dollar store in the Akron. And I love it there because in the wintertime when it's snowing and ice, I can walk to the store. I don't have to worry about driving and getting in the car. And I can walk. And that's what's so nice about our neighborhood. And to put something like that in there, it's, it's going to ruin, it's just going to ruin the whole neighborhood. So, you know, that's just my opinion. Well, you're most welcome. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak on this application? All right, seeing no one else wishes to speak on this application, I make a motion to close the public portion of this meet application. Second. Motion made and seconded to close the public portion of the meeting on this application. Commissioner mm -hmm. Lazuki, you've heard the uh, comments from the audience. Um, we have uh, concerns of uh, loitering. We have concerns of violence. We have concerns of no buffer zone. Uh, we have concerns. Of, concerns. We have concerns <laughs> of noise. We have concerns of traffic. Uh, we have concerns of drug drugs, alcohol, and we have concerns of who is going to be handling the security. So um, I know you have a traffic study engineer here. If you'd like to bring up to testify, it's up to you. But if you would like to yes, I'm sure, I think what would be appropriate, again, if the board were inclined to grant the interpretation, um, obviously we would be required to come back. Speak into the mic, will you? For a site plan approval. Uh, it would be at that point that I'm sure my client would have no objection to submitting a traffic report. However, I would just point out to the board and particularly to the audience that this is not vacant raw ground. This is an existing commercial center that was previously approved by the board, um, not only with respect to issues of parking, traffic circulation, but more importantly, drainage, lighting, landscaping. Again, my client does not own the facility. My client will be a prospective VC from the owner. Um, however, there are a few points I would like to address, aside from the fact that, once again, we have a fully approved site plan that was approved by this board. Um, with respect to issues of noise, this is not an open arcade in the mall where, obviously, you would have an overflow of noise. This is an entirely closed facility, uh, 
Yeah, unlike a boardwalk or again, an open arcade in the mall. With respect to the employees, um, my client confirmed that there would be in fact three employees on site during any particular shift, each one of which would be over 21 years old. In addition to the employees, there is a plan to have security on site during the hours of operation um, at all times. Again, it is not my client's intent to place a burden unnecessarily on the police force from the beginning, but this was rather a matter that is part of the unique business plan that we have in place that we're proposing before the board. And with respect to trash, it's my understanding that uh, the owner has represented to my client that the, there are street sweepers that maintain that site at least three times weekly. So again, we would expect that if my client were a tenant, that that service would continue as well. Um, I won't address, nor would I think it's appropriate, the issues of the restaurant and food waste. Um, we are not providing you know, food service. Right. Again, any um, beverage would be provided by way of a vending machine. At that same thing, we can certainly address the uh, request for trash receptacles out in front of the arcade for children who might be taking a soda can outside with them. We can certainly address that. When we do get the site plan, we could require them to have X amount of trash receptacles outside of their particular building to deal with soda cans, potato chip bags, things of that nature, if they are not already in place. And couldn't we have? sign on the door inside that says no food or drink allowed that help if you bought it inside again i think these are all valid and reasonable points not only from the board but more importantly the residents we obviously want to be good neighbors it's not our intention to be a burden upon the township or the residents um, however we would respect the request that the board grant the interpretation that is a permitted use we would defer the site plan issues to a later hearing where we would provide the board with a current um, survey of existing conditions. It would enable your professionals to um, inspect the site, but more importantly, the building, uh, which would be accompanied by a traffic or circulation report. And do you intend to hire a one of these special police officer, or are you going to have your own private security? I've, I'm in the process of pricing out, mm -hmm. so I am not committed to one or the other. That would be on site, on, on site, duty, on duty, every hour every of operation. Hour of operation. Okay. I think that I think that satisfies a lot of my questions. Um, that was going through your your rider and change to commercial use application last week. And I was going through that. Uh, that was one of my notes. As what the, the ratio of occupancy of kids was going to be um, per employee, and uh, if it was going to be a security supervisor, then you've answered that. Uh, you've answered the question of hours, you've answered the question of uh, not serving food, uh, we just talked about trash receptacles, we talked about loitering. Um, is, there any, is there anything else anyway? The, the only reference I had, uh, I got my son to look on a computer and there was a uh, Game One Gaming Center in North Carolina, Parkway, Barnett or something like that. Anyhow, they, they advertise birthday parties with pizza for the kids, and you can rent a character to come dance around at the birthday party. They advertise three different levels of weekly rentals for any game that you wanted to play. And they started at $40 a day to $200 a week. And, you know, and they look like a pretty high-end operation. As far as that, I don't know what the neighborhood's like there, but, you know. I don't. I don't have two hundred dollars a week to spend just on games. No, it, and we are not affiliated with anything in Atlanta, so it's not the same. Well, it, had, it had the same name, and it, the, it, the actual, the actual logo, like they use like the subway with their sign, Coca-Cola. It was the same kind of sign that you use in your operation. Well, how many facilities do you currently have? I haven't produced signage yet, so I don't know what the numbers are. Okay. The game on sign and, and you know, on the in higher letters next to it, it said gaming, gaming sign. Yeah. <coughs> and it was in North Carolina. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Not the same company. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm staying correct. How many facilities do you currently operate? This will be our first. This is the first? Yes. Okay. Uh, do you have any experience in this type of business? As far as entertainment, no. Not as as far as the games go. We have worked with other companies uh, as well as Betson who supplies the games that have done games across the country. Uh, we're following their format of how they set up other arcades. Any arcades in the area that we would be familiar with? Uh, they do majority down shore. They also do Funplex in Cherry Hill. Mm -hmm. um, majority of their line is the shore. Do you have any age uh, minimums? No. <coughs> uh, there is also, if you look in the package, there's also younger children games as well. What about requiring a child under a certain age to be accompanied by a parent? Yes. If the parents are dropping their children off, they're going to get a wristband walking in the door and they will not be allowed back out the door without a wristband. Or are you going to allow a Someone to a Chuck E. Cheese. I guess what I'm getting at is, uh, are you going to allow five-year-olds to be dropped off at the curb without a parent and no, just left there? absolutely not. Okay. So there's going to be a, a, minimum, a minimum age where they have to be accompanied by a parent. Right, and we will follow the state guidelines, which whatever age they could be left at home would be the age that they would be allowed to be dropped off. Okay. The state of New Jersey has to be the school change. Right, very good. Anything else? Um, well, I, after hearing from the residents, I, I have a different opinion. I, I, uh, I know that if it would go to the zoning board to determine the use of myself, the mayor would not have any say. But I tend to lean that this board maybe should review this a little more seriously as a, uh, you know, as a use barrier. Um, should, should, just, should once again maybe send notice out or do it. Uh, I know I was just asking for an interpretation, and I, I agree that the, the ordinance isn't designed to, to specify every single application. Um, but I understand that, that the, the ordinance was written by, <coughs> by council on this board, and it left out uh, gaming in this sense, and uh, maybe there was a reason. And so maybe that this board needs to look at it a little more seriously. I understand that during the planning stage, uh, we could uh, require certain things, but I, I think that this hurdle of getting over the use use variance is, is very important. Uh, this is correct. Once we allow this, we cannot take it back. Um, so I, I, I'm a little more, a little more concerned. Um, uh, the people who live in that neighborhood, have a, they have a right to have a good uh, I, I would just point out, Councilman, that the notice requirement would not be different from what was provided. Oh, I understand. You see, every resident that was on the list was properly notified and given an opportunity to appear to see Yes. So that aspect is And they did appear, and that's one of the reasons I'm concerned. I, I really came in with a much different idea about this. And um, hearing from the, the people who live directly behind this commercial property, uh, I understand their concerns. I do. Uh, I, I was thinking more of a Chuck E. Cheese type of, of facility. And that, if you look at the pictures, that and it makes it, it, makes it look like that. Like a Chuck e. Cheese but um, you know, that's not exactly <laughs> what is being proposed here, you know, about birthday parties and things like that. And I think this board is going to that as We did not propose birthday parties. Birthday parties. I know. This is not a party center. This is yeah. purely a gaming and arcade facility. Yeah. Um, there were a lot of, you know, misquotes as far as what the resident heard or not heard. But I'm sorry. our full application was presented not only within the written material, but more importantly, our verbal testimony this evening. This is not going to be a party center or, again, a facility that serves food and beverage. It is limited exclusively to gaming and gaming yes. facilities. I'm sure my son would, would enjoy it, but I, I have I have concerns. I, I do, but I think this board maybe needs to look at this a little more seriously. Is there anyone else who has any questions or concerns? I mean, now again, um, I guess David, you can expand upon this if you like. But if we do grant them the interpretation that this would be a permitted use. Um, that would in no way allow them to go forward with the application until they came before us with a site plan we would have to approve. Well, I, I think Mr. Lazoo put that on the record that he would come in with a more formal uh, uh, site plan application. It, 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 right. well, which, means, which means if we don't like the site plan, we can deny the site plan, basically. If, if we have a problem with the site plan that they don't agree to, they don't get site plan approval. Well, 
we would have an obligation to I don't know how she can do that. Well, yeah. I'm just, I'm just yeah. saying yeah. that if they, could. I mean, if they met the criteria, the engineer criteria, and then you, you couldn't deny the site. Right now, we know there, even though some of the public, uh, our, our residents might not agree, but apparently there's 117 parking spots there, or 117 parking spots that would be available, where this site really only needs, I think you said, Brian, what, 71? 71. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say that. Yeah, they could submit the formal uh, plan, but if it's in accordance with our engineering standards or what's required, you really couldn't deny it. You could, you may be able to put conditions. That's, on what, that's what I meant to say. Yeah, conditions you put conditions that they would need to fulfill. I mean, we obviously we have residents that are concerned, and we obviously want to try to do the best that we can to be fair and equitable to the residents and to the end of the applicant. Um, at this point in time, we don't have any information on the traffic other than or we have enough parking spots to handle it. You know, <coughs> if you did make a determination that it is a permitted use, then remember that it's a permitted use in any other of our commercial zones. Right. So that's, uh, you know, uh, you know, can't do course. spots only. Can't, you, know, you can't do that. You can't say, well, we did it for here. Another app could come in for maybe one of our other zones and say, we went out, well, we, geez, that arcade place is doing great. You know, it's it's fine. We want to put one now on a black wrist bike. Well, how do you deny it? You can't because you've already made a determination that, yeah, it would be from the head. So even though the ultimate goal, uh, even when I use that, uh, 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 Variance application where it looks like may this would, may be a, approved at least then you've designated it, it's approved for this yeah, one particular location. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons I, I tend to yeah, you know the mayor and myself sit step down. You guys look at this as a, a use variance, uh, you know, and then it would only be if it was approved only for that one. And then maybe you know. But I, I agree we're not going to be able to put any stipulations. There's no real site plan work going to be done. Nothing. It's inside the four walls of the building. Yeah. You know, it, it might not be as an intense use as what other use is. I mean, you could have a bar and restaurant in the same place. Yeah. Yeah. It's a restaurant, so you could have you could have a bar and a restaurant there. You could have a movie theater there. Okay, so which would, you know, which, you know, uh, I, appears to be more of intense use of what they're proposing as far as crowds and you know noise and things like that but you know they're the things you got to consider yeah the public portion's closed i know but no, Gary, how come he's cool there's a regulation let me let me hang on mr brilliant um the Interpretation that Mr. Capatos was just referring to is that if, if we deny the interpretation and we make them come back for a use variance, it would be like this location only. That's correct. Okay. So that in and of itself would give us some protection against having our cage pop up all over town. That's what. If you gave the interpretation that it is a permitted use in the commercial district, then it's a blanket. Then it's you've made a determination. Right. Somebody else in, or in a different area of the town could come in and rely on that. Well, I would respectfully disagree um, from the standpoint that I do not believe, particularly under the case law, that that would provide a blanket approval for any arcade or gaming facility. I think we I think we presented testimony that this is not a chain operation. This is a very unique niche business that my client is proposing. That if another application for a similar approval were required to come before the board, I do not believe that they could necessarily place any great weight on the fact that my client was approved. Each application would be viewed separately and independent on the merits. Well, we, no. we just may have a you know a difference of philosophy on that. I, I think it, it would be, and I agree with you, it doesn't mean it's automatic, but I think it would be, 
it, it could be used. But it, because we're making an interpretation, that's what you're asking us, to define mm -hmm. what the ordinance says. Well, I'm asking the board to, again, in, to carefully look at what uses are permitted within the commercial fishery. Okay. And your engineer has clearly outlined it and articulated what those uses are. Mm -hmm. And in general, they are retail and service style mm -hmm. establishments, of which my client's proposed use clearly includes and contemplates. It is not specifically a retail sale of goods. Rather, it's a retail sale of service, that service being time, time at a particular gaming console or gaming center. So again, I believe it fits in you know, the four corners of your ordinance as far as what the overall intent of the commercial zone, which was to provide a, an outlet for residents to access retail services, goods, and again, there is no ordinance that would encompass every proposed commercial use. This is a very unique and niche business, and our law provides the power of boards to make interpretations of what additional uses would in fact be permitted within a particular zone and district. Not necessarily commercial, it would include any other non-residential zone and district. Are we ready to vote on the uh, change of use application? As far as uh, whether we're going to allow them to uh, <coughs> require any fairs or not. Mr. Rowan, you. Well, you could take an informal poll, I mean, if you want. I mean, see what the, the members feel. Okay. And then. Mr. Wolf, will you? I, I vote to require any fairs. Second, sir. I concur with the chairman. Motion? Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I think that uh, the ship's on uh, as We can't hear anything back here. Yeah. Yeah. I would just like to say, I understand everybody's concern. Uh, I've been in this town for 20-some years. Uh, kids, if they're going to do stuff, they do it anywhere. Um, we, even the uh, girls' supplement we found, uh, we found uh, beer bottles and things. Uh, I I happen to uh, feel that this might be a step in the right direction to have it, them going someplace where there's people watching them. Having said that, having said that, I uh, feel very strongly that uh, they should come before us and uh, make an official uh, use variance uh, request. I'm going to oh. agree with the rest of the board oh. that they come before with that. Yeah. I agree with the rest of the board that come before us. It's Okay. All right. Well, it seems that uh, the board is uh, in agreement that we would like to see you come back and uh, request the use variance um, for the edification of the public. That's going to uh, they will re notice. And um, you know, they'll, they'll come back, and they have heard your concerns, and uh, we'll, we'll let's look at it again. Hopefully next month they're ready to go, and uh, we'll go from there. What's that? They're saying that the use variance is required. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Very welcome. Thank you. Is everybody okay? Do you like to adjourn? Yeah. Just, Mr. Rowan, do you want to explain to the audience in case they don't understand? Folks, what they can do, they're going to do now is they're just going to make an application for the use variance. You'll all be re-noticed and you'll come back you can express your same concerns. Okay, now the board can still make a determination at that time to grant them a use variance. You understand that? It doesn't mean that they've been denied. Okay, so I would envision that a, uh, Mr. Lazoop will do a, a formal notice of a use variance. At the same time, uh, he, he will probably make his, uh, a site plan application, ask for certain waivers, and then it's going to be a, a formal application. Can I ask one well, question? No, you, really, the public portion is open, and there's, there's no wow. application now be, before the board. If you want to wait till the end, there's another, there's a public portion that you can make comments. We have another, we have another applicant that has to, we have to move them forward to. All right, thank you all for coming. The next matter of business um, would be
Uh, some communication with the applicant for the Butler group. Good evening, Madam Chair, first members of the Jeffrey Barron, I'm representing the Butler group. We last saw you in November when we presented our application. We put on all of our testimony. Um, you may have some questions. I've been doing this for four years, and it's my experience that when you let a board think for two months, they come up with things that didn't come up in the first meeting. So my guess is that, and I might be wrong, but you may have some questions for us. We did leave the meeting talking about reduction in tension. And I said to you that I would consult with my client and I would be able to, at the next meeting, discuss it. In fact, I said... Mr. Barron, excuse me one second. Mr. Rowan, um... Um, yeah, this is a continuation of yes. okay. Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Banner. Sorry. Okay. Right here in it. Right here in it. We're discussing it. We're discussing it that you guys can't be perfect. Yes. In fact, the town uh, uh, Mayor, Mayor and the Councilmatic seat excuse themselves because this is part of a, a variance that uh, they would be the, the first court to hear it if we deny it, so they have to exclude themselves from hearing this testimony. Uh, Mr. Fullerton, who is a member, also is uh, stepping down. He is allowed to hear testimony, but he is within the 200 foot perimeter, so he is not allowed to vote on this application, just so you know what's going on. Mr. Barron, thank you thank so much. You. Thank you. Um, at the last meeting, we talked about numbers, and the chair asked us what we were willing to do, and I, I specifically recall saying to you that I would recommend to the client that we go to 92 units. Um, what you're going to hear is that no matter how good a lawyer it may be, clients don't always think they're as good as they think they are. And so I could not get my clients to agree to that kind of reduction. I'd like to go over with you what had been envisioned for the site and what we did before we came to you, and then I'll tell you what we, we are agreeing to do in terms of reduction. The very first drawing that was done on this site was for 134 townhouse units. When I saw that, it was seven units per acre. I indicated to the client, and I'm not trying to testify, I'm just trying to give you some background so you can understand where we're coming from. Uh, I said to the client, I don't think that that's going to be acceptable in running. Uh, been there before, and I think that's too dense. To give you a frame of reference, that would be seven units per acre. Your ordinance permits three units per acre. So that would be more than twice what you permit. We revised the plan and reduced the plan by 20 units. And that brought it to 114, which is what is currently before you, 114. That's a reduction of 15%. By the way, I could have made it look like it was a bigger reduction by changing the numerator and the denominator, changing the denominator to what we're asking, but I didn't. I used 20 units over 134, which is what we were thinking of doing. That reduction is 15%. So we did a 15% reduction before we ever put our foot in the door. Uh, 
Uh, we now have 114 proposals. My client will agree to reduce the units to 100, which is a 14 unit reduction. That reduction is 12.3%. So in essence, we've reduced it both voluntarily, well, always voluntarily, by 27.3%. Um, we, and we are willing to do that. We can't go to 92 because that would mean we reduced it 15% to begin with, and then we would be reducing it 20 additional percent. And from an economic standpoint, we just can't do it. It, it will not work at all. So we are trying to meet the board, as the chair said, somewhere in the middle, 114 is, is what was proposed. Uh, 92 is what we hope to get. We're giving you more than halfway, but it, it's we can't do any better than that. And I just want to be candid with you. If, we could, if I told you what my client wanted me to do, it was like bartering. It was like saying, well, we'll go to 114. And then you say no. And I said, well, we'll go to 112. And you say no. And then I say, well, we'll go to 110. And you say no. I'm not going to do that. And I've been doing this too long. You've been doing it too long. I think we have mutual respect, certainly for your professionals as well. And that's, that's not going to be productive. So we would revise it to 100. Obviously, we made a site plan application. If we get a use variance for density, we don't need a use variance. Let me, let me clarify something. What you just heard was a use variance under NVSA 40, column 55D, 70D1 to use variance. We're asking for a density variance. It's a different standard. It's a different section of subsection E of, the, of that. So we're not asking you to let us do something we're not permitted to do. I want that to be clear because I noticed that a lot of people have left. I suspect that they've heard use variants and they're thinking, sure. this guy needs that too. No, we don't. Townhouses are permitted. Right. Um, we made a presentation. I'm not going to belabor what our planner said, but I, I do want to drive one point home. Your ordinance, and this is why I believe, and I mean this most respectfully, that no court could ever adopt your ordinance for this reason. You have, you allow townhouses. Your zoning is three per acre. That's what you allow, three per acre, by right. That means that the rest of it is open space. And you remember at the last session, I presented testimony and, and Mr. Rowan agreed with what I told you as long New Jersey. You can't require open space anymore. You cannot. No board anywhere in the state can except for a planned unit development, which this is not. It's just a subdivision. As a result, you're requiring almost 40% of the site to be open space is impermissible. So I don't have any doubt that we're entitled to, and I'm sure you have concluded that from my demeanor, and usually most people say that, that I have no doubt that we'll get units. What we try to do, and we have done, is come between the three units per acre you permit and the seven units per acre my client wanted to do, and we're at five. And that's, that's really what this is about. And I'm, again, I'm not going to re-argue what we've already told you. I just wanted to make that point clear because it is a deficiency in the ordinance. Nothing you had to do, anything to do with it, but it's what, what we have to deal with. We ought to. Um, Michelle, what's the price range that these units were going to Right now, the anticipation is uh, the low hundred that the low hundred plus thousand. So let's say a hundred to hundred and fifty thousand. That's town plus units. Was there any dedication for low income housing? No, I, um, we are not planning to do any low income. We are not planning to do any section eight. We are not planning to do any subsidized housing. We are not preparing to do anything except market rate. Units. Market rate, and like not, not build that to rent. You're, build, you're building them to build in the home. Right. And we're de and we're de restricting them so as that the garage never become living space. They can never put right. a fourth bedroom where we're that counting that as part that of would our be part of the planning. Yeah. That that's our well, we did discuss it. That's yeah. part of our RSIS. So we board board. here last right. week. We have to have two. We might even need more than two, depending on bedrooms, number of parking spaces. And part of that will be the garage, which will not be able to be converted to any other use. I guess they could come in front of you and they could ask for use parents, and you would say, we're going to park the other car. Right. But no, we're not proposing to allow any use of that. And if you want us to be restricted against future use, I said we would and we would. I think, uh, Mr. 
Mr. Chairman, and I indicated to Jeff uh, before this meeting that the concern of the red, one of the principal concerns of the residents, and I think one of the uh, of the board was the tra traffic impact that it's yes. going to have on the uh, on our uh, uh, residents. Neighbors. And you, the board had indicated that you may want it to uh, want it to get just traffic report reviewed by yes. our own professionals with John. Unfortunately, he's not here tonight, Jeff. John said he's not professionally equipped to do. Right. And I, I did advise Jeff that, that before, I guess, an all of it vote would be made on the density issue, that the board wanted that that study done, or at least that, yeah, that review. Is, I believe, Brian, Mr. Pettit is getting hold of someone to review uh, the applicant's traffic study. Yes. That we, just, we just couldn't accommodate that. I understand. The holiday and my, and my, comment, my comment is the following. I appreciate your asking uh, David to contact me about that. Uh, we would like to see the quote of the cost, because I don't want to agree carte blanche to uh, report from a traffic engineer and get a bill for $10,000. I'm not going to tell you how much it should be. It shouldn't be $10,000, and it shouldn't be half $10,000, because the report exists. So it's a matter of having... So we're asking for a review of your right, report. Another expert review. We're well, asking for a new report. And we want so to review your report. Yes, and so long as those numbers are um, you know, reasonable, we will agree to pay it. I would point out to you, I looked at the organization that they told me, you don't have a provision for a traffic expert, which I the way, you still like to argue, you can't do it, you can't have it if you're doing it, but that's not our intent. Our intent is to make sure this works. Yep. And I think that's the intent of everybody. Even, even some of the residents who oppose it, I think their intent is, as you just heard on something else, they don't want it to, to avoid, to somehow harm their style of life and living. And we agree with that. So we will, we will agree. And, and, and as we talked, Joe, that's one of the concerns of the board. Sure. For the residents, that it's, we know it's going to be an impact. Any good time it's developed, there's going to be an impact. But we want to make sure that it's not a significant impact uh, and detriment to the, and I think that's where the board was coming. We're very comfortable with Ms. Drum's report. You may recall that she did an initial report, and then Ms. Pettit had some concerns about that report, and one did some additional studies done at other times, and Ms. Drum did that. So we have no secrets about the draft that we submitted it. We're fine with having another professional review that report. Just for your audience edification, what Mr. Banner is speaking to regarding the traffic study report, um, the original one was performed in August, which was vacation time, not school time, and the applicant, upon our request, agreed to redo the traffic study at, at our request, at their expense, to be more indicative of what a typical school day, no vacation day, peak hours would be. Uh, we have received that. We have passed that on to our professionals. Mm -hmm. uh, having said that, albeit um, we had testimony from the traffic study engineer, we still want to be even more proactive and go one step further and, again, at the applicant's expense, have one of our independent traffic study engineers review their report, not uh, do a brand new one, review their report as to the accuracy of it. So that's, that's what we're alluding and, to. And we would request, uh, respectfully, Madam Chair, that we receive a copy of the report that's submitted to the board so that of we can prepare people. Of course. And I think that review is going to be done under your office, right? Or John's office, Brian? Yeah. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And can, can, can John get a cost estimate of a review? Yeah. So we can notify yeah. Mr. Barron yeah. and his client? Yeah. Jeff, you also indicated that you might be able to have a rendering tonight. We're, we're, we I couldn't get it done for tonight, <laughs> Colin. But so we, will meeting, have, yeah. we will definitely have a rendering of the units available so that the public can see what these will look like. And I think in terms of low income and that kind of Section 8, I think it will lay any fears that they may have once they see what these units actually look like. Brian, um, at 100 units, what is that calculation per acre? I don't know. I think it's a bit over five. I think it's more than five. It's eighteen point six acres, Madam Chair. So at five per acre, I think you'll find that it's like ninety-one plus, almost ninety-two. So it's, it is a, oh, slightly over five. Yeah, acre. at ninety-one we were at five per acre, so it would be definitely over that. Yeah, slightly over. Right. 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 It's good. Yeah. Slightly over five.
Right. Yeah. 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 Well, in all due respect, your ordinance will never be upheld. Not with open. I understand that. No, we understand that. Uh, and, and, no, and listen, don't think I haven't had that discussion with my client. And my client's position is there's a break even point that makes sense. I'm below the break-even point, but I think I can make it work because I'll sell them for more than we were thinking of selling them. But I can't do I can't do better than 100. I want to tell you honestly, it gets to 100. Uh, I'm I'm lucky I'm here tonight, and somebody else is standing here. Okay, well, that's uh, that's their position. What kind of time frame do you think it would? Do you get a proposal or do you get the review? Well, I'll get the proposal. I, I know John spoke to somebody. I gave Shropshire. Shropshire. Yes. Um, I'm hoping that we have another by the end of the week. Yeah, I, we've done a lot of work on the developer side. You should know this, and the public should know it too. Because I agree with what Mr. Dietrich said. I like everything to be out there. I like everybody to know everything about everything. So. We have worked with Mr. I have worked with the Nova Shropshire extensively on many projects. Um, he is a quality traffic engineer. I have no opposition, certainly, to him doing it. I think David or one of he has four associates to work with. One of them could give you an estimate by the end of the week. If you call me, I'll give you the okay to go forward because you know the goal is to move it along. We're getting to the spring. We'd like to get to a point where maybe we might be able to open the job this year. Once we get the number, either myself or John, you can email everybody. Yeah, call, call yeah, uh, Jeff Dray. You don't have to go through my one. And he has, you have the report. He has other copies. We'll provide them. I would think that he probably could prepare a report for you guys. But I shouldn't. Right. Yeah, we, we can't want to do one this I would I would ask the board to continue it to the next month in the event that we can do it. Yes. If we can't do it, we understand that. And Jeff, just once again on the record, Matt, you're waiving any automatic rights of any approvals. Uh, I knew you were going to get to that. <laughs> our, our, and it's important. I was going to bring this up, and I rarely do. Um, I'm filing for an order. I have filed for an automatic approval in town of Burlington. Um, the time to review this application is a little challenging. It was originally filed in June, and I amended it on July 19th after use grant. There was no formal completeness determination, but it's 45 days from the day you receive it. It seems to me that your 120 days to act on the use variance probably began about September 10th, approximately. You so, that's the variance? Because of the use variance. And everything else is carried with that. We, uh, without the, uh, yes, I'm sorry. You're, You're absolutely right. Variance. I was the one that said it is a use variance. Yes, it is a use variance. On the density variance, you have 120 days to review it. So that's really four months. So September, October, November, December, January, it's very close. And I was going to say to you, and I knew Dave would bring it up, that we might even be in automatic approval territory, but that's not our intent. We want you to review it. We want to get the best review. We know we're going to be coming back if you do give us a density variance for uh, subdivision approval. So yes, we agree to extend the time for consideration by the board until the next meeting. If you can't hear it by the next meeting, it's perfectly acceptable to me if the secretary or Mr. Ruane calls me for a written extension yeah. beyond that date, and I'll be happy to. Uh, if you Again, we just and and the reason why I asked Mr. Ruane to, to call you uh, this week, I didn't want your client paying for a whole bunch of professionals to come in here and sit knowing that you were going to be waiting. For the traffic study. No, let me tell you that it is very much appreciated yeah. because I called the client and I said we needn't have anybody. Although Miss Drum called me and said I'm going to be there anyway, so I'll or, I'll or, stick around. And I said that would be great. She's going. She's going. Oh, Christine's done. Right, but, 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 <laughs> but I said build the other client. Don't build my well, client. I know where you're coming from. Yeah. So no, I, I appreciate that, but I just I didn't want you to bring all your professionals because no, I knew we're not going to be able to move forward no, until we you. obtain our review. Of the traffic study, so I, I do appreciate you coming in of your own accord to uh, answer any other questions that we might have. It was have. Uh, fun listening to the first application. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, that makes you that makes you have some idea of what's fun. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, no, we don't have that.
Yeah. You will after the, uh, the traffic study. We'll be right. open for the public. Just make it short. Just make it short. Yep. Does the board have any other questions for uh, Jeffrey or, or even uh, the traffic study engineer at this point in time? I don't think we're ready to do the traffic study question. Okay. So February 12th, if I heard correctly, is the next regularly scheduled meeting? Let's look that up. I, I thought that's what I heard. February 12th, 2014. So we would respectfully request that we carry the application to February 12th with my consent that we will not claim any automatic approval or any other rights under the municipal land use law to approval or any other vested rights until that date. If by that date the report has not been circulated, then I'll be happy to address a further extension um, by letter to the board. But if you'd like to see me, I'll come back in February. It's almost my birthday. Here we go. Come celebrate my birthday with the board. Take a cake for you. Okay. All right, Mr. Barrett, thank you very much for attending this evening. We truly appreciate your time. Happy New Year to all. Happy New Year, sir. Communications. Madam Chair. You're not, not going to open this to the public? No, not this time. No, not this. Only after the, we review the uh, traffic study that, or traffic review for the benefit of the township. Once we do that, and that would be a public record too, once that's in, you folks could review it. Then if we have additional questions, we do that for additional testimony, then we reopen it back up to you folks. But, okay. but it's not going to be an automatic approval. No, no, no that's just what I said. Mr. Barrett so said. We're we're waiting waiting the he's waiving that okay. right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. No communication, Madam Secretary? Hang on. One meeting here, guys. Good. Yes. Excuse me. At the November meeting, you said you could speak here. Because they had asked that we not be allowed to speak. And I know we said at the November meeting we would be allowed to speak. No, no, not tonight. Madam Chair, may I address you? You sure can. The, the law in New Jersey is that you certainly can hear the public in your general public session, which is Mr. Rowan said comes in Correct. the end. That's a good but well there, there is no additional testimony that's being given tonight. And as you all know, the public gets to testify on what you hear. There is nothing being heard tonight. So that's the only reason the public should not be heard, right. because there's nothing new, and they've already testified. But, as you said, Madam Chair, and as Mr. Lyon <coughs> said, they would be able to testify at the next meeting as to anything that we put on the record. Correct. Correct. You guys understand that? No, Madam Chair, but uh, are we going to be able to talk without him being here? The last time I, when we tried to talk, he said, you're not going to bring up discussion if the gentleman is not here present. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. Well, you, well what's the purpose of having a public meeting afterwards if they're not going to be here? I'll stay. I'll be happy to stay. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. I'll be happy to stay. You have to open up the, for the public I mean, we have a public portion if they want to get up and make a statement, but they can't they can't cross examine uh, any of our witnesses or, or any of the applicants witnesses. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be very But you got to open it up. You have to open it up. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, I'm just saying, I don't, I don't know this. Dan, I just say one other thing. Sure. But they can't talk about my application. Right, right. Because I, if they talk about my application, then as Mr. Rowan said, I can't cross-examine. Right. That's what And the municipal saying. land use law is very clear. I must have the right to cross-examine right. if they're giving testimony on right. the application. <laughs> so the, the purpose, as you all know, of the end of the meeting, public session is to talk about generally anything that they want to talk about, but not applications right. that are being from. Right. Okay, no no so sense then. It's no sense for, for anybody to go up there and discuss anything. Right. Well, then, listen, listen. There, this is a process. You have to understand that this is a process. He's going to wear us out. Um, He's going to wear us out. He's going to have less and less people come in here to complain and, and so. uh, you know, argue his fact. Listen. There's a process here for the laws to follow. There's municipal land use laws. This is not something where we make it up as we go along. You understand that? Yes. The applicant has rights. We have to uphold the law. We cannot hear testimony that from a, from a 
matter or a gentleman from the public without giving the applicant the right to cross-examine them. His application is not being heard tonight, okay? When his application is being heard, then you will all have the opportunity to come in front of this board and speak your mind. And then, of course, just like you saw Mr. Glazuk this evening, I called him up to rebuttal some of the complaints that were given by <coughs> the members of the public, which I very much appreciated. Uh, I thought all of you guys made valid points. I thought it was wonderful. I, I, I like having a forum. I'm not one to sit here and want to just put the hammer down and boom, boom, boom. There is a process going on here, and you all need to appreciate that we want to get it right. We're going to take our time. We're going to take as long as it takes to get it right. And we're lucky to have an applicant that is willing to work with us and not try to, you know, muddle, muddle the way through and push, push, push. They want to get it right. We want to get it right. That's why we're having especially a third traffic study done. Okay? Yeah. We had one done in August, another one done in, I think it was November or October. Hang on. No. Okay. And, and we're going to have it reviewed again this month. That's, that's basically three traffic studies because we want to get it right. So you guys in the public are going to have to be patient and you have to be diligent. If you want to, if you want to be heard on this application, I got to come back. Mr. Barron's got to come back. The planner's got to come back. Traffic study, they all have to come back. This is not, this is not to be taken lightly. This is the biggest application that this town has seen. I've been on this board for 15 years. This is the biggest application that's been in front of me in 15 years. I intend to do everything I can to get it right. And if it takes making people come in, making people come out, I'm not going to do anything to mess up the integrity of this application, including letting someone on the public speak when it's not proper. We're not going to do it. Okay? We're going to, we're going to follow the letter of the law. Mr. Oran is here. He's our solicitor. Uh, Mr. Mr. Barron is here. He's the applicant solicitor. We have to go by the letter of the law and uphold the integrity of his application. Okay, and if we don't, then we're making a mistake. And we're opening ourselves in the town up for litigation. Okay, so understand that we're not trying to tell you don't come back. I love you guys being here. I truly do. I love the room being full. I'll sit here till midnight to listen to you. But it's not proper and we're not going to do it right now. Okay? And there, that's the reason. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. Okay. Go ahead, communications, courses. Okay. So we don't have any money to use for the school yet. We're going to have a problem here in Romandry Garden Traffic. Yes. Andy County regarding the Romandry Corporate Center put in a letter stating that the letter is considered a waiver of further review on their course. Okay. Any questions on the uh, communication? We've received all communications. Okay. At this point in time, I want to open the meeting up to yes, sir. Resolutions. Oh, you want to do that? Yeah, we, sure. we have one resolution, uh, uh, Madam Chairman, that uh, from our December, December meeting. Um, it was for a preliminary and final amended section approval for the purpose of expanding the parking area at uh, 169th Avenue, uh, which is located in the Special Economic Development Zone. Um, so if you can, you know, vote to pass this resolution. Uh, Vice Chairman uh, Dickinson is going to sign that because he was yes. the one that chaired that, uh, that evening. So we have a vote on the approval of this resolution. We couldn't have voted this. Yeah, yeah we, we heard this in December. We heard it in December. And they had changed the No, we're talking about the... Um, you're talking about Sherry Delay? We have a change in because it was not this was what no this was this was I think was her in December, Jim, because the review letter was dated November fifteenth. Five eighty four Sherry Delay, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um the one six one sixty ninth Avenue. DPE 160 Ronnie Associates. That's Ronnie right, Associates, but we heard, we also heard, we also heard 584 Sherrington Avenue. Sherrington Avenue was in December. 584 Sherrington Avenue was in December. Was in December? Yes, it was. Yeah, that was the time that the ride was too close to the 
Right. I was not that okay. I, I thought it was this one that was uh, that Dick had to sign. Dick has to sign it. Okay. Because yeah. we did it last month. All right. Well, I, but two do I can get. We don't have the one for. Okay. I thought this was the sign. Nah. Yeah. Okay. Still waiting on Charlie to have one. All right. Okay, I'm going to abstain because I was not at the meeting, but we need a, uh, okay, and Mr. Fortin will abstain, but we need a motion to adopt the resolution number. Is there a resolution? Yeah, we're going to, for this year, we're going to, uh, I believe, or I'm just going to unilaterally number the, uh, um, the resolutions okay. 2014 when we passed well, number 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 eight. Eight. So well that's 2013 oh, okay. all right Whatever. so what I do when I do do resolutions for 2014 I'm just going to automatically know okay. that's, that's I'll call you to get that number okay we'll call that David What's the uh, a resolution out? Uh, I don't have a resolution for so, but we can memorialize it and then I can just send it in. I can uh, fax it into my. Uh, you want to state course. what resolution you memorialize? That was the resolution for. Let's see, that, was, that was the garage. This was the matter where a garage was already built on the property and they came in for a variance um, uh, for the existing. Uh, okay. Mr. Tintel? Yes. Yes, Toto. Toto yeah. or Toto? Yes. And um, where we were going to give him a variance where uh, uh, 4.21 feet side yard where a five foot was required, and we were giving him a rear yard setback for an accessory building where five feet required to allow him, the existing one is only 0.3 inches of the rear yard. So that's what we approved, and we can memorialize that. Uh, and I'll just send in the resolution to Warren. June can serve Okay. So we have to vote on it. So we'll we'll call, we'll call yeah, yeah, you can. What yeah. number? What number do you want to make the resolution? Uh, that would be. For that would be 2013. Right. So, you so we don't. We didn't give them a number. Okay. Okay. So we're going to take a roll call vote on the resolution. And we are going to, I guess, we'll just call it 564 Sherrington? Yes. Five, 584 Sherrington. Uh, roll call, Judy. Clayhammer? Abstain. Dickinson? Yes. For approval. Sushian? Yes. Fullerton? Abstain. Who was that? Who was that? Yes. I wasn't here for that. Yeah, abstain. How many votes were you? There's only six people here. Were you, were you here? How many? Uh, 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 three so far, we will be four. Yeah, Bill, can, yeah, that's, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Okay, so we memorialize that. We're we'll already that, and I'll um, email that tomorrow. Okay. Sir, that was not a variant training. That was just something that we had a hearing last month. We have to memorialize it. Someone, someone came in for a, a change in the garage last month. So the following month, we had to memorialize that resolution. That's all that was. Will there be a hearing on that after variance? There's, there was no variance, sir. It was it, we, we had a, we had a hearing on it, and that was done last month. That 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 application is done in the law. It was approved. Then? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you have any questions, you can read. You can go on YouTube and look at the meeting. It's on on YouTube. Yeah. Our neighbors. Notified yes, I have proof of service here. Um, right here is the proof of service. But you have to be within 200 feet. If you're not 200 feet, not to be noticed. But yes, we have the proof of service. Yes, they were. Okay, at this point in time, we will open up the good and welfare portion of the meeting. And again, we're not going to speak on any particular application. But if you have something regarding something in the town that you'd like to be heard from, um, you're more than welcome, welcome to state your name. Yes, Rebecca. How's that? <laughs> I'm getting more mic time in the 14 years I've lived here. Rebecca Davis, 629 Detmar. Um, I understand the rules about the applications and things like that. But I'd like to point out to uh, the board here that there are 97 homes that are for sale 
in our community. That was what, last month? Not including foreclosures. Now, this is sketchy information. It's approximately 97. Uh, a good example is I live on Denmark. My neighbor moved into, behind me, moved into an assisted living. Her home is listed for sale, 624 Andrea Road. It is listed for 120000 It is the biggest property on Glover's Farms, which is the traditional name of our development, although there's no signage indicating that on my deed it says Glover's Farms. Okay. Um, it is, so we were granted the easement, so it is over a quarter of an acre of land, three bedrooms, one bathroom, listed at 120000 and a one car garage, so it's the traditional split um, level. So it's listed at 120000 So this is a challenge, you know, to move this real estate. I understand that um, we're, we've encountered functional obsolescence with those homes because there's only one bathroom. Sure. A lot of them don't have basements, and a lot don't have um, powder rooms or a second bath. Right. Yeah. So I'd like to point that out. Okay? Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, Rebecca. You. Thank you. Oh, you're most welcome. Thank you. Yes, sir. I have just a quick question. Sure. Having a traffic study done mm -hmm. for the proposed house, but did you take into account the amount of traffic that might exist for the RT that it goes in? Also, we can't we can't talk about that application, no, sir. You just said that no, I'm asking about the traffic study, not the application. Well, that goes with the application. That goes with the application. Uh, they have to come back and they'll bring the traffic study. And so, so, we'll so, about that so we, we as the township, I assume, pay for the traffic. No, sir. Yeah, we get paid for it, sir. Okay. And so they'll have to get another one done? Yes, sir. Okay. I agree to do that, sir. Thank you. You're most welcome. Anyone else? Yes, sir. <laughs> John Schmidt, Boston City, New Jersey. Um, I had a chance. John Schmidt, Boston City, New Jersey. I uh, had a chance to speak to um, Councilman Tribe, and he had told me that the board had appointed the solicitor um, by name uh, of the firm, and not the firm as your solicitor. Yes. So I thank you. You're welcome. And I thank the board for that. You're most welcome. Um, it's been a couple of months since I've been here. Uh, I was asked to come back a while ago, but I was um, working on another project and a meeting for one the same as yours. Okay. Uh, the meeting, I think I went last time I was here, was maybe in February. The following meeting or the month after, uh, your vice chair had asked why I come to these meetings. And I did watch the uh, clip on Dan's blog. And um, to answer your question, because I'm an American citizen and I have a right to speak in any meeting. And you, as an official, have an obligation and a duty to listen. You're always welcome. You know that. So, just wanted to answer that for your vice chair in case he was confused. You're, You're always welcome. welcome. Yes. So, thank you very much. And once again, in regard to this list of women, I thank you. You're welcome. Happy New Year, John. Happy New Year to all of you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Sorry, I had to get the name. I'm sorry. Art Wise, 
to guarantee that, that could be protection. made a, that could be possibly a condition that's imposed or an agreement between the builder and the board okay at the time of this site plan review. When we moved here a year ago to Hadden Township and we had section eight Listen, I, I want to hear everybody's comments. I'm not That's comfortable it. hearing it outside of. Uh, I understand. And there'll be a time and a place for that. Please, please come back. I, I definitely want you to, but I'm not comfortable outside of the parameters of the law. The right okay. supposed to do. No, I, I, wasn't okay. sure I, I understand. And it's, Mr. Barron was nice enough, but I'm not comfortable with it. Anyone else? Hmm? Okay, the public portion is being closed. I'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Okay, Me meeting adjourned at 925. Thank you all very, very much.